I wanted to share this morning what I've been processing and oh, I wish you guys could see where I'm at right now. I'm sitting down by the river. I was just going over today's lesson in A Course in Miracles. I've already processed it, a forgiveness exercise and talk to Jesus and all of the things that I do in the morning. <laughs> but no, today has been especially clear is when we are in the vibration of a problem we can never see the solution from the vibration of a problem and with me when I'm working with my clients or when I'm just going through my life and if I'm too close to something that I'm trying to help I cannot see it at all yeah, I might have the gift of prophecy, but when it comes to my own personal and interpersonal relationships, whoo, I'm, I'm, sometimes I feel like I'm more blind than most. We tend to condone ourselves harsher than any critic or anybody on the outside. I know for me that I can't live in a state of feeling ashamed of myself. It, it feels like acid and it literally just starts to eat away at my body and I've experienced nearly dying just being in this state of shame and having my organs just shut down with lupus and hypoplastic kidney syndrome so I know firsthand how incredibly toxic it is to have that kind of shame about ourselves and so when I woke up this morning feeling ashamed of my behavior and my actions over the course of the last few months, I went right into my forgiveness practice. Forgiveness to me isn't just about saying sorry. It's about understanding something from a different perspective and seeing how you could do it differently and having a desire and a love to do something different, to show up different, to not take yourself so seriously, to allow yourself to have that humbling experience, to realize, oh shit, that was not <laughs> in alignment. I have a tendency to get very distracted by love, or I don't even know if I should call it love, because... It's not, it's more so like, I want to avoid stepping into my role on this planet because I've been, well, let's just get it straight. It's because of fear. But ultimately, I've been taught that, we've all been taught that if we shine too brightly, it takes away from other people and it's not safe to stand alone. And if you... <sighs> show them everything that is inside of you they'll either want to take it from you or they'll hate you for it and it's unfortunate that that's the kind of belief system that I've adopted on this planet in this incarnation and I don't desire to consciously walk forward with that belief system because I know I teach every day that we need to be sharing and shining our light it is by us sharing our story sharing our light sharing our gifts with this world it's what we came here to do it's it gives people permission to speak their own truth it shows people that anything is possible there are so many reasons why it's so incredibly important for us all to step in the light of our own truth. And I know that there's some of you out there that are going, I have no idea what I'm good at or what I came here to do. I just want to not feel so bad. I get it. Know that I've been where you are. And the reason why it feels so bad is because you've taken the projections that this world has told you that you are and you've tried to fit into their boxes and the, what they told you that you were doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good to any of us. And today you get to have a choice. 
each day you wake up, you have a choice. And you can either continue to believe all of the projections and continue to hate yourself, or you can choose to choose again. To make today about getting to know yourself. What do you like? Walk in any other direction because pain is a call to action. It's saying, pay attention, integrate now. It's saying, your higher self left the building a long time ago. Turn around, go in any other direction, anything that feels like relief. Walk it that way because I guarantee you, if it's dark where you've been walking, then you have nothing to lose. If you're already in pain, if you're already in fear, if you're already alone, if you're already miserable, then what the hell are we all so afraid of? The way to know if you're on the path of awakening or if you're in any type of danger, it would be if you weren't questioning why you do what you do every day. Why do you get up at the time you get up? Why do you go to that job? or not go to that job? Why do you live where you live? What do you like about it? What about your life is you? What about your life gives you enjoyment and pleasure to think about, to experience, to be in? All of the areas of your life that are coming up as have to do, and it doesn't feel so good when I do this. So you resist it. So you live in a perpetual state of resistance. And that's going to create physical pain, emotional pain. That's going to create disconnect in your interpersonal relationships. Because meanwhile, you could be sitting next to someone, but mentally, emotionally, you're somewhere else. You have to put yourself in a different reality in order to function or you just completely dissociate and walk through life as a zombie and right now it is a pivotal point in our history we're at a crossroads collectively we can look at what's happening in the world and get really afraid or we can see that a change is coming it's here and you can look at it through brand new eyes, seeing how incredibly auspicious this time is. I got um, an email about a global meditation today and just encouraging us all to continue to come together in these global meditations and the alignment and the age of Aquarius and the golden age and all of that. And when I pulled back and really tuned in to what was needed from me, I heard they don't know what the intention is. Yeah, we're all meditating and that's great, but are we meditating to resist what is because we think that it's bad or are we coming from the Christ mind knowing that everything is exactly as it is supposed to be. It isn't to look at where we've been or where we are and feel ashamed of how asleep we've been, how unconscious we've been. It is to have that moment where you can, as I did this morning, wow, That was not my truth. That was not an alignment. Stepping back and allowing for that resistance to release, I can see clearly. I don't need to go with such force or control. I see that every time that I fight for something, it is because there is an aspect of me that knows that it's not my truth, knows that If it was, I would never have to fight for it. We can look at everything that's happening in the world and feel like we need to sign a petition or have a 
new person in government or start a riot or whatever, but it's all resistance. And ultimately, it's coming from a place where you feel like there is something outside of you that is against you or that won't capitalize on your best interest. And that brings me to today's lesson. I trust my brother who are one with me. Trusting your brother is essential to establishing and holding up your faith in the ability to transcend doubt and the lack of sure conviction in yourself. When you attack a brother, you proclaim that he is limited by what you have perceived in him. You do not look beyond his errors. Rather, they are magnified, becoming blocks to your awareness of self that lies beyond your own mistakes and past his seeming sins as well as yours. A conflict with someone or I've perceived to be hurt by someone else. It's like you can go from loving someone to all of a sudden seeing why <laughs> they are the the bad guy and that is the ego's little game trying to keep us safe from experiencing what emotion that is coming up from that disconnect within the relationship it's trying to keep us from seeing how we could do something different. It's trying to keep us from feeling the pain of a loss of connection because we perceive that there can be no mending after upset. And this is only due to the way that the ego has been programmed, the way that humans have interacted has been very, very primitive. And it's okay for us to understand what is happening with inside of us without giving all of our power away to that little voice that tells us that people or things are against us. For the moment that we start to see our, our differences and see how that the world is set up to hurt us, that's the moment that you can use it as a meditation bell to see that there's an aspect of you that forgot the truth, that you are a holy child of God, that you came here for a great mission that you're giving your power away. You are blaming, shaming someone else because you can feel there's something missing. That person came into your life to bring back an aspect of you that you left somewhere in your past. And maybe it is so far in the past that you don't even have any memory of being able to tap into this aspect of consciousness but we are all one and even if you lost this aspect while you were still a tiny baby it exists if you can notice it on the outside it exists within you and so often what we are in love with on the outside or what we hate and shame and push away on the outside are the exact aspects of consciousness that are asking for our integration. And so today I wanted to share this part of my journey with all of you and tell you that I haven't just been where you are, I am you. I'm walking with you. And I'm not perfect, far from. I share my journey with all of you 
and I tell you constantly never to put me up on a pedestal. But there is a fear within me to step up. There's a fear of leading people astray. There's a fear of making people feel less than. In witnessing myself, it's like my favorite, my favorite thing in the world to do is to witness someone else find that light within them and turn it on. And me providing a platform and holding their hand as they walk up onto that platform. And then me shuffling off to the side of the stage, so to speak, and witnessing them in that light. That is what brings me more joy than anything else that I've ever experienced in this world. That's what I live for. That is my purpose. I have to do that same thing for myself and allow for myself to explore more of my gifts so that we can all stand and rise together. Jesus keeps bringing me today to how him walking on water and changing water to wine was not a parlor trick. And I think that it often gets confused by the masses into believing that he was special and he was the only. And I understand now that that is why the Course really emphasizes that no one person is special, that we are all uniquely perfect and the same. It had nothing to do with Jesus showing something that he could do that no one else could do. He was saying, look, this exists within you. Let me show you. And that exists within each and every one of us. And even if you're not seeing yourself doing magical things or parlor tricks, as Jesus is telling me today, doesn't mean that you don't have that Christ light within you. That you don't have something incredibly amazing to bring to this world. And if you're having trouble figuring out what those gifts are and you're just looking to relieve some of the confusion and pain that you're experiencing in your daily lives, then please reach out to me because I am here to help you and that is my gift to help you release the pain and the trauma that we inevitably all experience. And then be there to hold your hand or walk with you as you learn how to turn your light on. And that isn't anything that I'm gonna tell you. I, I get frustrated sometimes when people come to me and they're like, what is my purpose? I'm like, I don't know what your purpose is. But I can help you remove the blocks that are holding you in resistance to it. See, if I wanted to just be a prophet and give you, or a reader, and just tell you how to get across the Grand Canyon, how does that serve you? You would always be dependent on me or someone else. And would you really make those changes in your life or would it feel completely impossible? Because I know for me, from my personal experience, it would feel impossible. Just like it has when I've looked at my mentors over the course of my life and felt like there was such a gap between us. I'm glad that I never found that book that outlined exactly what you need to do to get from feeling so insignificant and small and not knowing how to turn on to leading whatever it is that they're doing or teaching because I believe that that 
step-by-step process, that book, it's different for each of us. And one of the things that I love about A Course in Miracles is that it allows for there to be an outline and guidance and a language for us all to connect within having our own experiences and interpersonal relationships we get to make it mean whatever it is to us in our daily lives appreciate you guys so very much for being here on this journey with me listening to me not to listen to me because I know best but just hearing my story because sometimes it can feel like we are walking by ourselves even though that's merely an illusion so if you guys would like to connect with me you can reach me at info at Kendra Divine Purpose Mentor dot com or if you guys would like to work one on one with me or join one of my groups you can go to Kendra Divine Purpose Mentor dot com I love you all so very much Have a good day.